Hey guys, just uh, spent uh, the last day and a half in a town called Dublin, Virginia. They had a big, huge flea market over there. Big, huge, how funny. And um, I'll make a quick video here of what I picked up. Uh, first of all, uh, the last video I made about where uh, I was kind of dealing with a troll there, I want to say thank you so much for all the kind words and all the support on there. I was actually do, just doing more venting. Uh, the guy caught me at a bad time and got in my head a little bit and I what, what I got back from you guys was just totally unexpected and very appreciated I'm one of those guys I take nothing for granted nor do I take any, any time you spend watching videos or taking the time to reply or wanting to get to know each other and stuff for granted um, so it is appreciated <clears throat> and just so this uh, video doesn't really uh, take too long we'll cut through this but I just want you to know that I'm, I'm really touched and it, it really gave me a boost I appreciate it guys I really do and um, anyway can't really say how much I actually paid for all this I haven't done the math yet uh, everything I got uh, I made a deal on I guess um, and you know almost everything I want to show you besides you know this record here everything was uh, you know supposed to be a dollar a piece but I cut deals where it was five bucks for three dollars I got two three things thrown in there for free and We'll just get to it here. First of all, this this isn't one of those life-changing albums, but I, I could not believe what I found here. This is Quadrophenia by um, The Who. And I found a guy there who was selling records, and he bought all his a bunch of records from, um, oh my gosh, what was he, a DJ up at a place he swears them down. It's called Richmond University School, I guess, uh, college. I, I never heard of it. But, um... I cannot believe this. This is Quadrophenia. This is, uh, you know, if you like Tommy, then this is kind of like the grown-up version of uh, of uh, The Who, where they've actually made a movie of it uh, based on this album with all these songs. Uh, my favorite song off here is uh, 515. A bunch of great songs. Um, it's like brand new. Um, I trying to remember when this, was, this came out. 1973. The year I was born, and this thing looks this 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 thing is mint. I mean, it looks exactly like it could be in the stores today. Uh, I couldn't pass that up. I mean, it was just oh. Anyway, got these two movies here. Whether you're a Terry Gilliam fan or not, you really need to check out the Fisher King. Um, awesome movie with Jeff the Dude Bridges and Robin Williams Mork for Mork. But basically. I've never seen a movie like this that showed mental illness to, you know, uh, I, I had a job where I actually got to visit state hospitals and such because of some of my clients and uh, this thing is like reality versus, you know, uh, that Terry, meets that Terry Gilliam fantasy. It's all for the search of the Holy Grail. Robin Williams is a homeless guy with a story. Jeff Bridges is a DJ that took off the air because he made a comment we ought to shoot them all and that's it's in the movie on his on his uh, radio station and a guy went into a restaurant and actually shot somebody so it's you know it's about him kind of redeeming himself and Robin Williams has delusions of red knights and that he's a knight and that we should all be on the crusade for the holy grail my favorite scene from the movie is when he finally gets Jeff Bridges down he lives in a bowler room under a building and he gets Jeff Bridges there, and he tells him why he thinks he is the chosen one that he was supposed to find the night to find the Holy Grail. So he's telling the story where he says uh, he was taking a shit, and <laughs> it was so funny because like he was uh, he was pushing so hard, pinching it so hard there that the guy had a vision of an angel appearing before him, telling him to look inside of this book on like I don't know National Geographic volume you know one hundred and 58 page 38 real specific and then he opened up and there was a man being interviewed and he has a brick home in the middle of New York that looks like a castle you know a miniature castle it has a tower and everything but behind him in the picture where he was standing in front of his desk in an interview looking all regal he has a bookcase and I'm on the bookcase he has a trophy and he says that's the holy grail it just cracked me up super bad not no big deal here I, I've had this I actually you know kind of enjoy it and uh the reason I like this movie when it really grabbed me was towards getting towards the end. Uh, all three of these guys end up meeting back up 
on a street running. They're all running from the cops for different reasons. And they're carrying their alcohol. And they just look at each other. They converge on this dark street trying to run to the party. And they look at each other and they go, run. And they just say, run. No questions. They were knew exactly what I was talking about. All I want to say is, that's happened to me. I mean, I was just like, oh my god, they're writing from reality. Alright, moving on. Now we're into the comics. Okay. Dark Tower, number four. This is a variant cover, which is the only reason I got it. Uh, variant edition. Never really got into the comic books of the Dark Tower. I'm, I'm, uh, Jay Lee has great art on it. I'm sure I, I saw some pages before. So, uh, you know, it was a variant cover. Alright, Superman Man is still number 30. Now, what's cool about this is that it is still bagged. I've got one of these, but it's unbagged, but this one's still sealed. And for the gimmick cover they were doing, the actual cover is a real smooth plastic, and it has these vinyl clings on it where you can make your own cover. And this was actually, uh, um, I'll, you know, in the 70s, we'd get a, I had a Kiss one of these. Oh, what were they called? I can't remember what they were called, but I had Kiss. I have a Super Friends one, and, uh, you know, this is back in the day when we had to use your imagination. But all these peel off of the board, and you can stick them on the cover and make your own cover. Martial Law, Crime and Punishment. Martial Law takes Manhattan. This is a one-shot, epic imprint. This, I think this came out after uh, his initial um, um, debut in a six-issue miniseries. I think it was called Fear and Loathing. Um, to me, this is the un... un unrecognized third book of the 80s uh, Watchmen, Dark Knight, and he had Martial Law but Martial Law is a completely different beast okay it's uh, the artwork is more disturbing the whole concept is different I mean there's a reason that it it's, didn't get as acclaimed so don't get me wrong but it's one of those things where I think it was so harsh at the time it was kind of hard to read for a lot of people check out Martial Law when you get a chance this one sat satires the entire you know the Marvel Universe Turns out all these guys are in asylum, and it kind of uh, <laughs> it, it pokes fun at Marvel, so it's really good. Now I got this one because it's an upgrade for me. This thing's never been open. Mine has the big crease here where it's been mine. Mine's been red and open. This one's pretty much mint condition, near mint. You know, ah, this was an impulse buy. I was caught in the moment. I've had this book two or three times. I always end up getting rid of it. Uh, New Mutants number 100 by Rob Liefeld. This is, of course, where it quit, <clears throat> and it went on to become X-Force. No idea why I got this. Got a friend who got a hold of me on Facebook. He saw my auctions on the eBay. Said that he wanted to know if I had any Excalibur, so I picked up some with the hopes of reselling them. Number one. I uh, actually enjoyed Excalibur. I've got a whole big set of these. Number six. And, um, you know, I really enjoy them. They're, the Chris Claremont issues, you know, it, it was funny you know he, he put a little bit of humor in there or so and if you pick up one issue of Excalibur to do this get number 14 this is hilarious this they they're they're in the cross time caper where they're basically uh, jumping from dimension to dimension and they land on one where this is one of the funniest issues ever and now that I'm thinking about it um, I may just go ahead and do a review of this one issue but as you can see with the cover it looks you know, when you see the front cover, it looks pretty serious. And then you come over here, and things get rather silly. You know, you got your fat Quicksilver there. And yeah. Deathlock is Captain America. Loki has the hammer. It's hilarious. You know. It's really worth checking out. Oh. Bag that up in a minute. Number 15. Nothing to really see. 16. Love this cover with Nightcrawler. You know, a little takeoff on John Carter or Mars. Number 17. This one has a whole bunch of different Captain Britons from across the dimensions. And then here's the Coupe de Gras that I found. I was able to piece together the entire 10 issue series of uh, v, v for Vendetta by Alan Moore. I'm really going back and forth on selling this set. I've got to trade, but it's really nice to have these. And years ago, I ran across these in dollar boxes, and I didn't get them because I thought there were twelve. Well, if I'm, you know, I, I wanted the whole set at the time, and they only had ten. Well, it turns out there is only ten. I'd never heard of a maxi series at that time that only had ten issues. There's number one. Okay. Oh, they got covers on the back too. 
number one, number two, number three. That's a shot they got. Yeah, they put that one in the movie. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Number four. Number five. Number six. And this is the issue. This is the uh, one of my favorite issue in there. Number six, seven. Number eight. Number nine. And number ten. Really great series. Uh, I believe this was actually written in the early 80s in a British comic and then DC put it over there. A couple of videos ago, <clears throat> I was talking about finding the cult, with Bernie Wright's art, and I ended up finding uh, the whole, I guess the whole set, I'm assuming it was four issues, and ended up buying a double because I found one book, and then the next place I went they had the whole set. Okay, there's book one. These are by Jim Starlin and Bernie Wrightston. Book three. And really looking forward to reading these. I've, I've really, I ran across these before, and this, for some reason, this book, this series never really, there's nothing really want me to read it. And then I found a, a cop, you know, I don't know, number two or something, and was able to flip through it. And I was like, okay, I need to check this out. This came out in the 80s. Yeah, and there's the double I bought. I have two of number three. All right, found me a Ronin. This is book five. I think this is maybe two books out of the series I got. I got the trade. I think Constant Bromstar just did a review of it not too long ago. Okay, and these are up, this is an upgrade. And now that I'm looking at it, crap, somebody's written on them. 223. Oh, well. Uh, number 24. Number 23. I did not have this one. Uh, Saga of the Swamp Thing. Oh, I hate that they, somebody's written and wrote on them. I didn't notice that while I was there. And number 33. So, I definitely needed two of those to complete my run. And what I like about comics is uh, there's no way you can ever know it all. And this is Wally Wood's Thunder Agents. Uh, all I know is that in the Thunder Agents you have the Raven, you have Dynamo, you have No Man. It seems like they had the Iron Maiden and stuff. And I'm a Wally Wood guy. I mean, you know, um, you know he's an EC artist stuff. But, uh, you know, this I think the Thunder Agents came out in the 60s. I mean, I can't really go into detail here. But this is from Delu Deluxe Comics. And I think this is from 82 and 83. And when I started getting through here and started flipping through this, I bought these out of pure curiosity. It's George Perez art. Keith Giffen art. Um, cannot, I'm not going to say who wrote them because I can't remember off the top of my head. But what I found interesting, I was like, these are all DC guys from the, you know, the 80s there. What's going on? Then I started noticing it's Deluxe Comics, and in the letter page, it's begging you to write them, and I saw the address, and it looked like it was the same address as DC Comics, so I know the Thunder Agents are owned by DC. They bought up a whole bunch of uh, characters like Charlton and, um, you know, some of those Impact characters. I think they kind of rented those, but anyway, I think this is actually an unknown published DC comic, Deluxe Comics DC Oh, you know, same address to write in. So I'm real curious to read these. Number two, I just got the first two. You know, awesome Perez art there. Classic Perez. Alright, moving on. This was things I might probably go on eBay. I got two Whitman comics that I cannot believe I found. Uh, this Justice League uh, Whitman. There's the Whitman banner. And then this, I about fell down when I found this. I, I don't think it's a major major i don't know I'll, I'll just look up the whitman variant that's probably go on ebay yeah superman book um garcia lopez cover i'm a garcia lopez is one of the greats man yeah whitman cover thought that was cool and i always wanted to read this one but i've never been able to find it 184 with dark side on it justice league justice society and the new gods uh but that's the new gods uh, from the uh, mid to late 70s there after Kirby left when they got the superhero costumes. There's Oberon, Mr. Miracle, yeah, you know. Uh, this was just for me. These are out of order. Uh, DC Comics Presents, they had a ton of these here, but I went with the uh, Super Shazam issues. Superman and Shazam. And then it leads into Superman and the Shazam family. And King Cole, I think, is from the Monster Society, so it sounds like he's on Earth S. Unless they come to, you know, Earth One. Superman in the House of Mystery. Uh, I'm a Cain and Abel nut. And right there on the cover is Cain. So, yeah, I had to grab that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Demon number five. 
I don't have any demon. I think I got a covers copy of uh, maybe a couple issues there. This thing is in, I mean, this is seriously near mint condition. I mean, it's flat. It's still glossy. The pages are still white. The spine, I think they're like maybe one little minor stress wear there. No frayed edges. No dog-eared corners. I mean, this thing looks like it was in a book and press. But now, this is number five, but I have to get number six because in issue six, you see that? Next issue, don't let him come among you. He's the howler. Of course, I have to see that. All right, got me a Machine Man Jack Kirby, number eight. I'm hoping it's cover. It's Kirby. It's uh, Kirby and Bob Wyke. And that guy, Wyke, has been around a lot longer than I thought, man. Uh, 1978, uh, inking his stuff. So, you know, hopefully that's a good one. And I got this one for free because it's not even connected to the cover. I'll show it to the guy. He knew he wasn't going to sell it. So I bought, you know, three or four books off of him and gave this to me. And this was just a book that I always wanted. I think it's from 1969. It's Adventure number 380 for you guys. Because I always saw this cover in advertisements with some other books I got and never ran across it. It's a dinosaur with kryptonite teeth and all that's left is, uh, you know, Superman's costume there getting shredded. So I finally got this and everything and they really thought Superboy was dead. I was, you know, flipping through it, reading it, you know. And then it dawned on me, why do you have a Legion story where they think Superboy is dead? Because history tells them that he grows up to become Superman. But it was still cool to get because of the cover. Maybe I've grown up too much for comics and I don't know. Anyway, that's it. That's my haul. And thanks for sticking around.